Hey friend, if you are making Gen AI app for the first time, or like me thinking about involving our existing one to be MCP compatible, let me ask you a question. Should you put your MCP client into front end or back end? It's a deceptive simple question, but took me weeks to really think it through. In this video, I'll walk you through a typical Gen AI app architecture. I'll show you my problem solving process and share some tips that can help you to make your architecture decisions for your app and why. Here's what our current architecture looks like. We have a front end and a back end. Front end is built using Next.js framework and it's written in TypeScript. Backend is built using Django framework. It's a Django app um, and written in Python. Frontend and backend are communicating using WebSocket API. When a user sends a query in, frontend is going to do something and send that, pass that query to backend through uh, WebSocket API. And backend, when they receive the uh, information, is also going to do something and send the response back to uh, front end using WebSocket API. In the front end, once they receive the response, they're going to display the results uh, to users so the user can see it. Let's look at uh, the front end in depth. So when a user sends a query in, the front end is going to do the user, uh, it's going to get the user token. And the chat AI component is going to get the user query, the user is sending uh, input queries, and both the token and the query is going to be passed to backend using WebSocket API. Once the backend receives the user token, it's going to try to check, hey, is the signature actually match? If match, then we authenticate the user. Only when we authenticate the user, we'll go to the next module, the RAG uh, Retrieval Augmented Generation process. That's when the user query is going to be converted into an embedding. Embedding is just a list of numbers, a mathematical representation of a semantic meanings. And the embedding is going to send to Pinecone vector database. Pinecone is going to help us find the top K most relevant articles or videos and retrieve them as a context and pass it back to a large language model. And large language model is going to think, hey, is the context relevant to answer the user question? If the answer is yes, then it's going to use the uh, context to generate the response and then send it back to the WebSocket API. However, if the answer is no, then it's going to use web search and then use the uh, web search results to generate the response and send, again, send the response back to WebSocket API. Once the WebSocket API receives the response, it's going to stream token by token in real time to front end front end will start to display them in markdown format so the user can start to read the answers. So in summary, uh, what our front end does is going to uh, get the user token and uh, pass the user query and token to uh, back end through the WebSocket API. And the core functionality of our backend is for user authentication and context uh, to get the context from Pinecone as well as the LLM orchestration layer. So here's what confuses me. If we look at the documentation and the key participants of MCP architecture, you can see the MCP host is the AI application, okay? That's our front end and back end. MCP client is a component maintains connection with MCP server. That doesn't help. MCP server is a program provides context to MCP clients. And if we look down here, you can see MCP server can live outside of MCP host. However, MCP client 
lives inside of the MCP host. Besides the term MCP client, client gives me the feeling of that. Maybe it's connected to front end. But if you look at the specification and look at the architecture here, and let's skip this diagram, you'll probably already see a thousand times. Read carefully about the definition of the host. The host creates and manages multiple clients, control clients, handle user authentication, coordinates AI and large language model integration, manage context aggregation. That sounds a lot like our backend service. So if our Django backend app is roughly equal to MCP host and the MCP client needs to live inside of the MCP host, it means that we need to put the MCP client in our backend Django app. Now the mystery solved. We are back in business. That means we are going to uh, transform our backend architecture. So remember this before architecture, it get the user query and token, does the authentication, has the RAC component, and after transformation to become MCP compatible, it's going to look like this. So the step one is still the same. We're still going to do the uh, user authentication. Step two is new. We're going to be a nice MCP host. We will spin up MCP clients. And the number of MCP clients you are going to spin up is equal to the number of MCP servers. And because what the MCP client does is the client is going to send a request to the MCP server and asking, hey, what you can do? And MCP server is going to say, hey, here's my capabilities. And then all those capabilities is going to get exposed to large language model. When large language model is ready to receive a user query is going to become aware, hey, I have these capabilities, do I need to use them? For example, if I need a pinecone context, then the large language, language model is going to make a call to the MCP client one, and client one is going to get the context from the RAG server and expose them as an MCP resource. And then the large language model can use the context to generate response and then send it back to WebSocket. So everything is within this one LLM session. It can decide, do I need extra help? Should I just directly answer the question? Or it can use multiple uh, clients to help it uh, answer the user question. That, my friend, is how you decide where to put your MCP client. So remember the two key takeaways. Number one is MCP client doesn't equal to front-end client. It has nothing to do with the user interface. And key takeaway number two is the guiding question to think about where should you put your MCP client is to look at where does your current large language model orchestration layer live? The MCP client should be close to the LLM orchestration layer because remember the large language model is not going to directly talk to MCP servers, but rather it's going to uh, talk to the MCP client and then the client is going to talk to the server and get the list of capabilities. You know, it's the kind of, I know a friend knows a friend, that kind of connection relationship. I hope this is helpful. If you are also evolving your Jenna app to be MCP compatible, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Or if you have any questions, feel free to leave in the comments below. That's a wrap for today. Have a lovely day. I hope to see you soon.